Let's take a look at what I would consider to be one of the most innovative airbrushes out today. This airbrush is the Badger 360, and what makes it so special is that it's basically two airbrushes in one, a gravity feed and a siphon feed. In the position it's in right now, this works as a gravity fed airbrush. All you have to do is place a few drops of paint in the cup and you're ready to paint. But if you're gonna be painting a large area or a very large surface, you could actually rotate this cup 360 degrees. If you rotate the cup halfway to the 180 degree position, this airbrush now works as a siphon fed airbrush. And with the siphon fed jar connected to the bottom of the airbrush, you can now hold way more paint than you can with a traditional gravity fed cup. And as the name would imply, you can rotate this cup 360 degrees in either direction. This gives you so many options for your paintings. So before we get into the full review, let's take a look at what you get in the box. Besides the instruction booklet, which has a lot of great information in it, you get the airbrush and two siphon fed glass jars. Both of these glass jars are three quarters of an ounce each. And if you need larger glass jars, you could buy two ounce ones directly from Badger for only a few dollars. The gravity fed cup on top of the airbrush is pretty small. It holds around 20 drops of paint, which is about one and a half milliliters. I think this is a great size for the paint cup because if you wanna spray a good amount of paint, you're gonna be using the siphon fed jar anyway. The build quality on the Badger 360 is pretty good. Just like every other Badger airbrush that I've owned and reviewed, the finish and coating on this one is adequate. Just understand that Badger airbrushes are nowhere near that harder in Steenbeck level, which to me is the gold standard in build quality. But unfortunately, there is something very strange going on within the body of this airbrush. It may just be my particular model, but we'll talk about that later in the review. The Badger 360 has a very large needle and nozzle at 0.7 millimeters. For this type of airbrush, I think a nozzle size like this is excellent. It's gonna be very forgiving and you're not gonna have problems spraying some thicker paint through it. So this airbrush excels at spraying thick airbrush paint directly from the bottle without needing to reduce it. And if you paint models, this is gonna be an ideal airbrush for spraying on base coats. And if you paint art like I do, this is gonna be a great airbrush to spray on those varnishes at the end of a painting. One thing that I've never been a big fan of is that Badger has its own thread size when you're connecting your air hose. So what I do is by one of these quick adapters made by Badger. There's even some third party options out there and this will fit into the other end of any standard quick adapter. I use the Iwata one connected to an Iwata braided hose and this connection fits perfectly. Compared to the Badger Patriot 105, you can see here that the bodies are very similar. Both are equipped with my favorite airbrush rear handle design, with this, you can unscrew the chuck and pull out your needle while the handle's still on. I personally feel that quick access to the needle is extremely important when you're painting. This is the reason that I always remove the handle on all my other airbrushes while I'm painting. I just want quick access to that needle, and I honestly wish that all other airbrush brands had something similar to Badger's design. In the hand, the Badger 360 feels extremely comfortable. It's very similar and nearly identical to the Patriot 105. The trigger feels very soft and comfortable, and it's Badger's standard round top design. I've always been a huge fan of Badger's trigger design. It's simple, it's comfortable, and it offers a great amount of grip. And this trigger is identical to the one in the Patriot 105. I think it's also important to point out that the rotating head design has a solid amount of resistance to it. To me, this is a very good thing. There's no way this is gonna accidentally rotate or tip over while you're painting. The engineering and ingenuity behind this airbrush is absolutely incredible to me. So like always, let's move along to the breakdown so you can see the internal parts. So the first thing I wanna do is unscrew the rear handle then I can unscrew this small chuck to remove the needle. Once these parts are removed, we're able to unscrew the spring mechanism. The first time I took this 360 apart, I noticed something very odd here. This is the problem that I mentioned earlier. It seems that the threading inside the body of this airbrush goes way too far back. If I'm screwing this spring assembly back into the airbrush, there's essentially no end or stopping point like there is on every other airbrush. As you can see here, as I'm screwing this in, it's just going in way too far. The only reason that it stopped at this point is that I hit the back of the trigger and the trigger lever. I'm assuming that this was just a mistake or an error in the manufacturing because I've never seen this on any other Badger airbrush before. If we take a look at this Badger Patriot 105 here, we can clearly see that there's a stopping point as I screw down the spring assembly. And side by side, it's obvious here that there's something off with the Badger 360. If it's screwed down all the way like this, I'm not able to pull that trigger back. So if I unscrew it to the place where it's supposed to be, like it is on all my other Badger airbrushes, the entire assembly will start to rotate if I start to unscrew the chuck. And also if I take the needle out to clean it and then place it back in, 
If I start to tighten down the chuck to lock in the needle, this whole spring assembly starts to rotate as well. So the only way for me to lock in the needle is to grab the spring assembly with my left hand and then tighten the chuck with my right. And you can see here that if we look at this through the macro lens and I shine a flashlight on it, that these threads just go way too far into the body of the airbrush. Again, this is probably just a simple manufacturing error, but I buy all these airbrushes with my own money and I want to review them the way they come to me. But continuing along to the breakdown, if you unscrew the spring assembly, you can see this small brass screw here. This screw is used to adjust the spring tension on the trigger. If you want softer trigger tension, you could unscrew this a few turns, but like always, I always recommend keeping this screw down pretty tight. That way you'll just have a much better seal because the spring is pushing that needle forward, creating a good seal between the tip of the needle and the nozzle. And if I fully break this down, you can see it consists of four parts. We have the spring, the housing, that brass screw, and of course we also have that needle guide which the needle slides through. Moving along to the trigger, the trigger lever isn't connected to the trigger itself or to that spring housing behind it, it's just free floating, so you need to be careful with it. Moving along to the front of the airbrush, the first thing I'm unscrewing here is the air regulator. Behind this we have the air cap, which has six holes on it, which evenly spray that air over the front of the nozzle. And to unscrew the air cap, which is sometimes difficult to do by hand, I always recommend picking up these inexpensive soft draw pliers, which I'll have a link for down below. Just remember that everything on an airbrush should always be hand tight, but sometimes some of the threads get a bit sticky and it's hard to remove by hand. This model was brand new and I wasn't able to grip it by hand, so it's always a good idea just to have a pair of these on hand so that you don't scratch your airbrush. After I removed the air cap, I noticed that there was a lot of whatever type of sealant this is on the threads. You don't want any of this stuff getting into the nozzle of your airbrush, so if you buy a new one, I would unscrew this, check it out, and just clean it off if there's any excess. The nozzle itself is free floating, which I love. It makes it so easy to break down and clean if you need to. Now, as I said earlier, this is the large nozzle size at 0.7 millimeters. But if you'd like, you could buy two kits that Badger sells for this. They also work on the Patriot 105, and that's the 0.5 millimeter and the 0.3. If you feel like this large nozzle puts out too much paint, it might be a good idea to switch to a smaller one. So that's it for the breakdown. The individual parts are pretty good. The standard Badger build quality. And again, I'm not quite sure what's going on with that threading inside the body of the airbrush. But if it's a manufacturing error, which I'm assuming it is, I'm sure it's covered under warranty. So let's move along to the spray test. The first thing I want to check is the airspeed. So at three and a half inches away, spraying at 20 PSI, I get an airspeed of around 6.8 meters per second. And since this airbrush is designed to spray thicker paint and it has that larger nozzle size, an airspeed like this is perfect. Testing the trigger response rate, this airbrush felt pretty good. To be honest, I don't think it really felt as good as the Sotar 2020 or the Badger Patriot 105. It felt a, a little bit slower, like I had to pull a bit farther back on it. But I think the major reason for this is just that it sprays a lot more paint than I'm used to. That 0.7 millimeter nozzle just really lets out paint, so you have to be careful here. And of course, this airbrush really isn't designed for detail work, so you're not going to be holding it very close. But if you want to, like I'm doing here, you can still see that you get some pretty thin lines with it. Consistency-wise, I think this airbrush sprayed excellent. It's really perfect. You can see no skips or no sort of splatters within these lines. And with the jar, it sprayed just as well. I bumped the PSI up here a little bit to around 30. So the line is going to be a little bit wider just because it's, it's letting out some more paint. But if I hold it closer to the surface and spray it pretty quickly, you can see that we can get a pretty thin line with this. I was working on this small study, which is basically a sketch of this Mustang. And for the majority of it, I was using my Iwata Custom Micron. But I decided to switch over to the 360 for some of the larger areas toward the end here. I started around the wheels with some black paint to get in some of those shadows and dark black backgrounds in behind the wheel. So as I'm painting this in, you'll see that I'm using a shield just to get those sharp lines in and defined. And I was very happy with this airbrush. It sprayed very well. It's nice that it lets out a large amount of paint because with the Micron sometimes, it's just you have to give so many passes and so many layers if you're trying to fill in a larger area. So that's where this airbrush is going to shine when you need to paint in a large area and you want to put down a lot of paint. So that's what I did here. I switched over to the jar and added in some matte black paint. This is Createx Illustration. I'm using it directly from the bottle. And I'm using it here to spray in the background. And it did such a good job at just spraying a very even flat coat of that black paint. So I think all around this is a really cool airbrush. Again, I recommend it mainly for those of you who want to spray some thicker and some higher volumes of paint. 
things like base coats, backgrounds, or varnishes. But with that said, you can swap out the nozzle and needle to the smaller size, the 0.5 or the 0.3. You'll of course have to buy those separately, but if you do, you could kind of just do everything with this airbrush. You could use it for detail work using a 0.3, and then when you want to spray those wider applications, you can switch back over to the 0.7, which comes with the airbrush. So that's going to do it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back here next week. We'll get back to some painting.